Hello everyone, welcome to FedScoop TV. Greg Otto here coming to you from the Red Hat Government Symposium. I'm talking with Bryce Pippert, the VP of Digital Solutions for Booz Allen Hamilton. Thanks for joining us today. Happy to be here. So how are you seeing open source affecting what federal agencies are doing when it comes to their digital enterprise? Yeah, I think you know, open source is really transforming government right now. And there are a couple ways to look at open source. There's one, kind of reusing things that exist, but there's also doing development out in the open. And you know, we're seeing both take off in the government right now, and I see a lot of benefits. for they're, they're the typical things you hear about, about cost savings and eliminating uh, redundancy. But in doing that, we're also able to really empower our people, and they feel like they can create value and build upon building blocks that already exist rather than recreating the same things over and over again. So it's really empowering to the people that, uh, that we have working on our projects, supporting the federal government, and uh, we're really starting to see also acceleration of delivery is another real benefit. Um, we're seeing that we can reduce the time to deliver solutions for our clients. And we're also taking risk out of the system too by, okay. by using things that are tried and true and we have communities around them that are curating and maturing those solutions over time. So when it comes to emerging and innovative technologies, how do you see open source helping agencies leverage that? Yeah, I mean increasingly the emerging technologies are being done in the open and so if I think about things like blockchain as an emerging technology, okay. you, you really have to be doing that based on open source technologies that have been curated and are being developed by industry. Um, there's really no other game in town to take on something like blockchain. You really need to be using Ethereum and Hyperledger. And so, you know, I see open source as critical to most emerging technologies that we're seeing today. There's certainly software as a service, platform as a service capabilities that are out there and that are mature. But if I look at the, the real emerging technologies that we're trying to bring into government today, most of them are, are based on open source that's being incubated in the private sector and pulled into government. So another big thing when it comes to development is containerization. How do you see container technologies uh, forcing innovation inside federal agencies? Yeah, I mean, containerization is, is also an important new development. Uh, we've been working with Docker and Kubernetes for, for a number of years now and have a growing workforce that's focused on those sets of capabilities. Uh, with containerization, we're able to have solutions that are really uh, focused on kind of the fundamental building blocks of the system. And we're also able to build automation and testing around those things. And so we end up with systems that are more reliable. And if a little piece goes down, the whole system doesn't usually go down. So a lot more reliability, a lot of scalability to be able to ramp up and ramp down particular individual microservices according to the needs of that particular environment. Um, so reliability, scale, and portability across different environments too is really important. So we're helping eliminate dependence on particular cloud vendors and be able to manage across multiple complex environments in the, in the government. So cybersecurity is a preeminent concern inside yeah. federal agencies. How does open source help drive federal agencies to be more secure? Yeah, with, with open source initiatives, we have communities that are looking at the code, constantly refining them, looking for security flaws. I'd much rather have an open source approach to dealing with security than an individual developer. And so the communities that are built up around these things, the maturing of different open source capabilities, uh, the security evolves along with those rather than rebuilding something from scratch and needing to build in security at each step of the way. So I've found that the, the open source projects that we have are actually the most secure projects that we have because you have that community set of eyes on it and you have a community of developers that are contributing to it and it's no one kind of lone developer actor that can introduce a flaw into the system. Great. Bryce, appreciate your insight. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. For all of our videos, check out our YouTube channel. And for more on open source inside the federal government, check out fedscoop.com. I'm Greg Otto. Thanks for watching.